So what's up everyone? It's your friend Stephen Finley back with yet another video. This is gonna be part two of the camera stuff uh, that I just did. Mostly because A, I thought that video was really long, kind of boring. I watched it back after I edited it and I thought, man, there's no way I would stick around for this. Also, I have a microphone right here and I talked about having good audio and my microphone wasn't even recording. So I kind of screwed the pooch on that. I had a comment from a subscriber, Wheels1, thank you. I'm gonna let you guys read this in the comments. I'm just gonna answer some of the questions and things that he mentions, or she, I'm assuming. Anyway, read that comment. It's gonna be a little bit more high level for, for some people, some of you guys viewing this, um, but it might answer some questions for some of you others, uh, other folks if you have it. So I'm gonna kind of address that, try to make this short and sweet, so to speak. Uh, less boring. So the first thing uh, he mentions is having a camera that overheats, but he also likes 4K 30. 4K as in the resolution, 30 as in 30 frames per second. So there's three typical frame rates that most people shoot in, 24, the one I prefer, um, 30, and then 60. 60 is gonna be a lot for your slow motion. 30 frames, think of the news. When you watch the news, they use 30 frames a second or soap propers for you duck hunters that watch Young and the Restless. So I wanna talk about that really quick. The other thing is your fixed aperture, F2.8, and then we're gonna talk about your S-Log3 camera profiles for you guys that may or may not know that. I I'm assuming those of you that watch this, you're familiar with these things. And then sort of your post-production process. Wheels recently got a FX30. It's a beast of a camera. It's a kind of like a little mirrorless camera. It looks like this, except it's their cinema version. A lot of bells and whistles, the thing is a beast. 12 hours of filming musky, other things you wanna do, the camera overheats, I get it. The camera's overheating because A, it's hot outside, and B, you're shooting for a really long time in 4K. Just gonna happen. In my opinion, you can do what you want, but this is what I would recommend, or there's some thoughts. You don't really have to shoot in 4K. 4K, in my opinion, is for reframing. And what, I re what I mean by reframing is this. You're looking at me right now, and then all of a sudden I can reframe myself to be in one of the thirds of the image. Uh, that's a reason a lot of higher resolution cameras have higher resolutions because you can get multiple camera angles out of one shot. Unless you're gonna be doing some reframing in some of your shots, you don't really need 4K. 1080 will be fine. Most TVs are still 1080. And, and by the way, most people are watching on their cell phone. 1080 is really all you need for some YouTube stuff. Now, I will say a hero of mine, a filmmaker named Ben Potter, he does Hunt 41. He has Kana Outdoors. Um, I got to shoot with him this past year on two of the episodes, which I can talk about later. I was a little bit starstruck because he's my hero. And uh, and I think I did a terrible job, but I was also kind of starstruck and I don't really get starstruck. Anyway, I digress. He, his mentality is he doesn't want to, f he wants to future-proof any content he puts out. So, you know, TVs are continually getting better and better. Um, monitors are getting better and better. And he doesn't want to put out something in 1080. That way, you know, 10 years from now, it's going to look like what we look at 720 today. I understand that, but to speed up your workflow in post-production, it's easier on your computer if you shoot in 1080. So I shoot some stuff in 1080. I'm shooting this, this video in 4K so that you can see how the reframing works. Otherwise, I would just shoot it in 1080 because it's just going to live on YouTube. Most people are going to watch on their phone, that kind of deal. By the way, if this is helpful, do me a solid like the video, consider subscribing. Most of you watching this are duck hunters. Duck hunters notoriously don't subscribe to things. It's just how we're wired. But it would really help me if you would consider subscribing. I used to not care. I kind of care now because it really makes me feel good. Anyway, back to it. I want to talk about your S-Log3. And by the way, just so you know, I'm, I'm looking down at my notes here. I want to talk about S-Log3 versus Rec. 709, which is the color space as you mentioned. I wouldn't shoot S-Log3 unless I were planning to manipulate the footage. Most of the YouTube people that I follow and other professionals, they always shoot an S-Log, excuse me, because they're concerned about the dynamic range and also camera matching. So if they shoot on several different cameras, when you shoot an S-Log 3, you get the most dynamic range and you can stylize the footage and match different cameras a little bit easier. If you're not gonna be doing that, if you're not gonna be stylizing it, if you're just kind of whatever's in camera, like what you're watching now, I'm not stylizing this. 
heck, I'm probably not, I'm not even color grading it or color correcting it. This is just straight out of camera because I'm just putting it on YouTube, trying to get it out. I'm not trying to make a cinematic masterpiece. Shooting the Rec 709, it's also going to help post-production workflow. You don't have to manipulate the footage. If it's in 1080, it's gonna edit much faster. Again, it requires less computer processing. It's also gonna save you hard drive space and it's not gonna be as big of files. So that's also good. Now, the other thing you mentioned was shooting on a fixed F2.8 lens. Uh, if you're shooting outside, I would consider maybe not shooting on F2.8 all the time unless you need to uh, for two reasons. One, you will have less shots that miss focus because F2.8, the autofocus is constantly working, trying to figure it out. But also, a lot of lenses are actually at their sharpest between F4 and F5.6. It's kind of weird, I know. But I would try to be closer to F4, F5.6, maybe even F6.3, somewhere in there, so that A, your autofocus isn't working as hard. Out, you're not gonna have as many out of focus shots or as many shots where the, where the autofocus is hunting. And also it's gonna be sharp. So unless you're just dead set on shooting at F2.8, go ahead and close that aperture down, shoot at any of the higher stuff. If I'm shooting all day long, I'm probably gonna be trying to shoot at least F5, six, maybe even as high as F11, just cause if whatever I aim the camera at, I want it all to mostly be in focus. And if it's really bright and I don't feel like using an ND filter, which is basically like sunglasses for your camera, for those of you guys that don't know that, I'll just shoot at a higher aperture. Having it weather sealed, I think that's critical. Make sure the lenses that you shoot on are also the nicer versions because they're also weather sealed. So the for the Sonys, you're gonna be looking at the G Masters. You get like this, this is the 24 to 70 G Master 2.8. Um, also weather sealed, that's another thing you're paying for. Premium glass, but also, you know, that weather sealed stuff. All right, so that's pretty much all the uh, thoughts I had. I appreciate the comment. If, uh, if this video was helpful, do me a favor, like it, share it with somebody who you think it might help. I appreciate you guys. Thanks again. And I think I'm gonna do a video next talking about some cut downs because, well, that's kind of what I want to do. And that's what I do on my channel, whatever I want to do, within reason. So anyways, thank you guys. See you in the next one. Man, it is late. It's 12.15 and I'm off work, work tomorrow. I'm gonna stay up late, do crazy stuff. Check my emails. 1217. Look at that. I don't care what the face is. Oh, there you go. Bam. All right. I'm out.